Before we get started on today's notes, um, I want to graph some stuff on a number line. So this is just kind of a little warm up I want you to take a look at. So when we're graphing stuff on a number line, first we're going to graph 0, which clearly is right there, um, 4, negative 0.9, 2 thirds, let's see, pi, that's 3.14, and e is 2.7. Um, so you can see we have, this is uh, a whole number, uh, integers, uh, we've got rational numbers, irrational numbers, and we've got all of those on the number line. But then we get to 5i, and this is an imaginary number. And we don't really have a place to put that. That's because we call this a real number line. Um, and there's just not a place for imaginary numbers, and there's certainly not a place for complex numbers like 3 plus 7i. So in order to get those numbers, to be able to graph them, um, we kind of need to expand this. So the way we do that is we expand with another axis, and just pretend that's straight, okay? And we would call this axis the imaginary number line. So here it would be 1i, 2i, 3i, so on and so forth. So if we want to graph 5i, we would just go up to 5i and put a dot there. And then the combination of the real number line and the imaginary number line enables us to graph things like 3 plus 7i. So 3 is your real number, so you'd go to 3 on the real number line. 7i is the imaginary number, so you'd go up to 7i. You know, I'm kind of running out of space. So all of this together, we would call this the complex coordinate plane. Okay, so the real number line was not sufficient to get all of our numbers on there, so we needed to go in two dimensions to get this. So we're going to talk about complex numbers in section 8.5. So we've been talking about vectors, and you're going to see some parallels between vectors and complex numbers in what we're doing, uh, but they are different, but we're going to use a lot of the same skills. So what we just talked about is right here in your notes, we use a number line for real numbers, but if we want to go into complex numbers, we need two axes. So the x-axis is our real numbers and the y-axis is our imaginary numbers. So if we want to graph uh, the complex number two plus three i, that's two in the real direction and three in the imaginary direction. Okay, and this is our point. Now we can find the absolute value of complex numbers. Remember, absolute value is the distance from zero, so we want to find this distance. Well, we've created a, a right triangle out of this. Clearly, this side is two and this side is three. So if we use Pythagorean theorem, we can find the absolute value. So that's what we have right here. Um, so to find the absolute value of the distance of zero, we just take a squared plus b squared and take the square root of it. And that's just a modified Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so let's do a couple just like that. We're going to plot these numbers and find the absolute value. So the first thing we're going to do is set up our coordinate plane. Um, negative 2, so 2 in on the real number line, and then 5i, 2, 3, 4, 5. And there it is. And now we want to find the absolute value. Remember, the absolute value is the distance from 0. So to find that, uh, the absolute value of z is going to be the square root of negative 2 squared plus 5 squared. And that's just that modified Pythagorean theorem. So absolute value of z is the square root of 29. All right, for the next one. 3 minus 4i, so we're going to go 3 in the real direction, and then down 4 for the imaginary, and there's our point. And then to find the absolute value, that's this distance from 0, uh, is the Pythagorean theorem, or the distance formula, however you want to think about it, it's the same thing. So... That's going to be the square root of 25, so the absolute value of that is just 5. All right, now, what we have done before, like last semester, 
we can already add, subtract, multiply, and divide complex numbers. Let me show you what I mean. So if I have 3 plus 5i and 2 minus 4i, whatever. Okay, if I tell you to add those, you're like, no problem, I can do that. You just basically are adding like terms. We can subtract those. No big deal, we did that before. We can multiply those. Um, let's just pretend that's a big multiplication sign. That would just be a FOIL problem, and we can do that. Uh, we can also divide them. The way we divided them is, we remember we multiplied by the complex conjugate top and bottom. We just, we did 2 plus 4i and 2 plus 4i. Okay, and then we would go on. Okay, so that's how we added, subtracted, multiplied, and divided. We did this last semester um, and we reviewed it a little bit earlier this semester as well. Now, if we want to do more complex stuff with this, like if we want to raise it to a power, let's say we wanted to take 3 plus 5i and cube it. Yes, we could write it out three times and do a whole bunch of foiling with it. That gets really messy. Um, so we kind of need a better way for that. Or if we want to take the square root of that, we do not have a method for that yet. So that's what we're going to be working towards is being able to take complex numbers, raise them to powers, and taking roots of them. In order to do those things, it is helpful to write our complex numbers in a different way, and we call it trig form of a complex number. So here is our number. Okay, this a plus b i. Okay, and we've got it graphed here. And so this the side of it's a, and this is b, and then we call this uh, radius r. Sorry that was very sloppy, but you get the idea. Okay, um, so r we find just by using that distance formula, Pythagorean theorem, and then using right triangle trig. Um, if this is theta, an angle. A is going to be our cosine theta, because if you take the cosine of theta, that's adjacent and hypotenuse, and then if you solve that for A, that's where that comes from. And then B is our sine theta, and same thing, if you take the sine of theta, that's opposite over hypotenuse, um, and then you solve that for B, and that's what you'll get. So we can rewrite A plus BI, replace that A with our cosine theta, and replace the b with r sine theta. And this thing is called the trig form of a complex number because it writes our complex number in terms of it, the radius and the angle. So that's something that you're going to need to know. That's here in this box, important information. The trig form of a complex number a plus bi is r cosine theta plus i sine theta. Um, that the only difference here from this one is we factored the r out. Um, and so then this just reminds you what a is and what b is and how to find r. And then also remember that the tangent of the tangent of the, our angle is going to be b over a and that just comes from this triangle up here. The tangent is opposite over adjacent. The number r is called the modulus of z and theta is called the argument of z. I do not use those words, but if they pop up in your homework and stuff, I just wanted you to have seen them before. So um, let's do one of these problems. So we want to write this complex number, negative 2 minus 2 root 3i, in trig form. Best thing to do is to go ahead and graph it. So we're at this direction, negative 2. And then we're down negative 2 root 3. And we're just going to make that little triangle. So what we need to find, remember trig form, is r cosine theta plus i sine theta. So we need to find out what this r value is right here. And we also need to find out what theta is. So the r value is going to be easy. That's just that Pythagorean theorem distance formula, however you want to think of it. So we're going to do negative 2 squared plus negative 2 root 3 squared. So r is 4 plus, 
Uh, remember, you got to square both these things. That's a common mistake. So this is 4 times 3. So that's going to be the square root of 16. So r is just 4. All right, so then we need to find theta. To find theta, um, it looks like we have opposite and adjacent. So we will say that the tangent of theta is negative 2 root 3 over negative 2. So negative 2s are going to cancel out. So tangent of theta is just root 3. And then that, um, you can do that in your calculator, inverse tangent, you may recognize this. Uh, if you put it in your calculator, it's going to tell you that that is uh, 60 degrees or pi over 3. But that's in the wrong quadrant. Um, we're in the third quadrant, so we need to take 180 plus 60 degrees. So the theta that we actually want is 240 degrees um, or in the correct quadrant and in radians, 4 pi over 3. So to finish out our trig form, we have cosine of 4 pi over 3 plus i sine of 4 pi over 3. We will do another example in the next video.